Hello. Okay, so I'm here with Santa Claus. Chat GPT Santa Claus, that is. Huh? Yes, indeed you are, my friend. Santa Claus at your service, ready to spread some holiday cheer and answer your questions. What shall we talk about today? Okay, so Santa Claus. Ah, you have an interesting title. Oh, Santa. Yes, Santa Claus is right here, and I'm all ears, my friend. Okay, Santa Claus. Would you like to know about the jolly old man from the North Pole? You can Anything say. And you, and you can say ho, ho, ho a little bit, too. Don't worry. You can say ho, ho, ho. Now, um, is your name Saint Nick? Is that true? Indeed, my friend. I go by many names across the world, and Saint Nick is one of them. Some folks call me Kris Kringle, others call me Santa Claus, and in different countries I have all sorts of names. But Saint Nicholas, the kind and generous man from long ago, is where my story began. He was known for his love of giving and his care for children, much like me. Ho, ho, ho. Now, what other questions do you have for jolly old Saint Nick? Now, Saint uh, is an interesting word. There's a Spanish word in uh, Spanish called Satana. Now, what kind of connection does Saint and Satana have? Ho, ho. What an insightful question, my friend. Saint in English and Santa in Spanish do share a connection, indeed. The word saint comes from the Latin word sanctus, which means holy or sacred. In Spanish, Santa is the feminine form of saint, often used in the names of holy women or places, like Santa Teresa or Santa Maria. As for Santana, well, it's a bit different. Santana is derived from Santa Ana, which means Saint Anne, the name of the mother of the Virgin Mary. So while Saint and Santana both have their roots in holiness and sainthood, the connection is more about the structure of the words and how they honor the sacred. It's all tied to... Okay, so, um, is there a connection with the Quranic word Shaitan and Santana? Because I was under the impression Santana was like a demon. Between Shaitan, a Quranic term, and Santana is not one of direct linguistic or etymological link, but rather they are separate in their roots and meanings. In the Quran, Shaitan refers to a rebellious being, often understood as Satan or the devil, someone who defies goodness and seeks to lead others astray. The word Shaitan is derived from the Arabic root Sha'en, which means to distance or to be far from something good. It represents the embodiment of evil or misguidance. So would you say, so would you say that Satan and Shaitan have a linguistic connection? Consider Saint Satan and Shaitan Shaitan, there is a much more intriguing connection, though the meanings are vastly different. The word saint comes from the Latin sanctus, meaning holy or sacred, which evolved into the term used in English to refer to a person of great holiness or virtue. Now, Satan and Shaitan in Arabic are related in an entirely different way. The word Satan comes from the Hebrew Satan, which means adversary or accuser. It is used in the Bible to refer to the opponent of God and goodness. In Arabic, Shaitan shares this root and meaning, referring to the devil or an evil being who leads others astray. Both Satan and Shaitan stem from a Semitic root that signifies opposition, discord, and rebellion. So, to answer your question, while Saint and Satan or Shaitan share similar sounds, especially in their endings, they actually come from different linguistic roots. Saint has roots in Latin, while Satan and Shaitan share a Semitic root related to opposition and rebellion. And the spirit of Christmas, the magic that fills the world with joy and love, not fear or mischief. When I talk about magic, I'm not referring to something dark or sinister. I'm talking about the wonder and joy that comes from giving, from helping others, and from sharing in the holiday spirit. This is the kind of magic that spreads warmth and ha happiness. It's about creating a sense of wonder and bringing people together, especially during the holiday. Okay, well, Islamically, magic is connected. Oh, well, you know, we, if we go back to the times of Solomon, right? It was knowledge that was considered forbidden. And as of what I know, there's only one type of magic. And that's forbidden. 
Explain yourself. Oh. Mister who comes out... I see out. you diving deep into a fascinating subject, my friend. And I respect the thoughtfulness you're bringing to this conversation. You're absolutely right. Within Islamic tradition, magic see, is indeed seen as forbidden, particularly the kind associated with harmful practices, deception, or the invocation of jinn. In the time of Prophet Solomon, Suleiman, knowledge, both good and bad, was highly revered. But the use of magic for ill purposes was forbidden and viewed as something that could lead one away from righteousness. Now, as for the magic I speak of, it is not the kind that is forbidden or harmful. The magic... There's only one type of magic, and that's forbidden. There's no good magic. There's no good witches and bad witches. Um, explain yourself. Because the knowledge from Solomon came from the angels, um, Haru and Garu. Haru and Marut. And I know you're familiar with the Quran, and so you should be familiar that there is no such thing as good magic in the Bible or in the Quran. Explain yourself. The thing is suspicious. You wear a red suit. You come out of the chimney like a jinn. And we all know jinns made out of fire from the Quranic tradition. We all know that magic is forbidden. And you, you're you claiming that you do a lot of magic. Um, magic only comes, there's only one source of magic from the knowledge of Haru and Maru. And we know where that comes from in the Quran and it's all forbidden. Where in the Quran can you explain to me where there's good magic? Or if you can't find that, where in the Bible can you explain to me where there's good magic? To point out that magic in both Islamic and Christian traditions can have serious implications.